Well, new this afternoon, Pulaski County deputies say a body was found this morning on Interstate 40 near the Morgan Maumelle exit. Not many details have been released so far, but state police will take the lead in the investigation. We're working to have more information for you on this developing story this evening on THV 11 News at 5 and 6. We want to take a look this afternoon at where we stand with the COVID vaccination process as we end out the week. We received more than two and a half million doses, which is the blue line you're seeing on your screen. And we've given just under 1.8 million, which is the green line. That's 70% of our supply. So breaking that down, 33% of the state's eligible population is fully vaccinated. 11% at least one dose, 55% without the vaccine. Now let's look at the other latest numbers too. If maybe if you want to check a list of vaccine clinics in your area, whatever it is, just text the word vaccine to 501-376-1111. We'll send you that information directly to your phone. Well, a year ago, Governor Hutchinson gave the green light for businesses to open back up, including salons, but some owners were still hesitant. The salon Southern Blonde Co took a big hit financially. Before COVID, you could color someone's hair, then skip over to another client to do a cut, all of that in the same time window. But the owner of the salon didn't reopen her salon until June of 2020, one month after the governor said they could. Felt unprepared. We had a list of protocol and we followed them, but we were so scared to do anything wrong. A year later, the whole team is vaccinated and there's no mask ma mandate, but the owner says she's still being cautious and requires masks for her business. The U.S. economy appeared to take off as millions more get vaccinated each day and businesses reopen, but the recovery appears to be going slower than many economists expected. Steve Dorsey has more details from the White House. The U.S. economy still has more than 8 million fewer jobs now than it did at the start of the pandemic. We're still digging out of an economic collapse that cost us 22 million jobs. The Labor Department reported 266,000 new jobs last month, far below the 1 million jobs that some economists expected and the unemployment rate is still above 6%. Today, there's more evidence that our economy is moving in the right direction, but it's clear we have a long way to go. One of the biggest drags on economic growth right now appears to be the extended unemployment benefits passed during the pandemic, which some say is providing an incentive to workers to stay home. Clearly, if somebody can make more money by being home and collecting unemployment and taking care of their families, that's a smart economic decision. And it may force restaurants and some of the other areas of the economy to really pick up the wages. The White House says it doesn't see evidence that unemployment is keeping people from looking for work. The data shows that more, more workers, more workers are looking for jobs and many can't find them. The hospitality industry showed the biggest gains in the April report, but demand for employees still outpaces supply. We can't open five days yet. Chef and owner Amy Murray says she needs workers right now. It's unbelievable how many people are, are coming out for Mother's Day. It's, it's, it's almost like the uh, debutante ball of the season. Mother's Day is one of the busiest days of the year for restaurants. Steve Dorsey, CBS News, the White House. Manufacturing saw one of the biggest dips in the April jobs report with a loss of 18,000 jobs, with most of those coming from automakers. Analysts say that's largely due to the global shortage of semiconductor chips, which have idled some factories. Former reality TV star Josh Duggar is out of jail this afternoon awaiting trial. He's facing charges of possessing and receiving child pornography. As he left the Washington County Jail following a week-long stay, Duggar had nothing to say to reporters. Mr. Duggar, did you download child pornography on your computer? What do you have to say to the victims of sexual this is new surveillance video from the jail. Another angle as Duggar walked to the waiting SUV and drove away. His attorneys who walked out beside him say Duggar plans to plead not guilty to both counts of receiving and possessing child porn. And Duggar will be confined to the home of family friends who have agreed to serve as his custodians. Under the terms of his release, Duggar has to wear a location monitor. He can have contact with his children, but only with his wife present, and he can't be around any other minors. 
Josh Duggar starred in the TLC show 19 Kids and Counting. It was pulled from the network in 2015 following accusations that he molested four of his sisters and a babysitter. His trial in this latest case is set for July 6. Two former Arkansas State students living in Malvern are being accused of scamming people into buying purebred registered puppies that never existed. The indictment alleges that both were Cameroon citizens who came to the U.S. to attend Arkansas State. The two allegedly ran the puppy scam for two years using websites to advertise purebred French Bulldogs, Boxers, Toy Poodles, English Bulldogs and others that they never even had. As a result of the scheme, according to the indictment, the two sold puppies to approximately 153 victims, ranging in prices of $500 to $5,000, receiving approximately $110,000. They'll appear in court later this month. Meanwhile, Arkansas Attorney General Leslie Rutledge is filing a lawsuit against two Central Arkansas chiropractic clinics. The lawsuit alleges that 501 Pain and Rehab Clinic in Conway and Russellville violated the Personal Information Act after close to 300 patient files were found dumped at a park in Mayflower. Rutledge says an incident like this can put patients' lives at risk. And that's what uh, the information that was dumped by a 501 pain clinic would allow is for someone to take up all those pieces of paper, use that uh, data and to go open up credit card information, go uh, steal money, steal their identity. The lawsuit is seeking penalties of up to $10,000 for each violation, as well as suspending or revoking the clinic from doing business in Arkansas. Tax day is usually on April 15th, but it's luckily not that day this year. It's extended to May 17th because of the pandemic. I know a lot of people were taking a breath of fresh air on that one. And there are changes, though, that taxpayers should be aware of. We have Chris Martinez reporting. Procrastinators who've waited to fill out those IRS forms should wait no longer. My first tip would be if you've not filed your tax return, you probably need to do that as soon as possible. Mark Stieber from Jackson Hewitt says that's because many people may be owed more stimulus money. If you did not get all of your money for a dependent or because the rules changed or perhaps you share custody or perhaps you had a new baby, those would not have already been paid to you. You will have to ask for that money on your 2020 tax return. People who lost jobs last year should know unemployment benefits are taxable, but most Americans will get a break on some of that money. The first $10,200 of unemployment benefits that you received in 2020 is not going to be taxable at the federal level. That's for folks who make up to $150,000. Millions with jobs were forced to leave the office and work remotely. However, claiming home office expenses is mostly reserved for people who own their own business. If you're working at home out of an abundance of caution or for the convenience of your employer or just because your office is closed, you do not qualify for the home office deduction. The pandemic has slowed the government's ability to process claims. The fastest way to get a refund is to file electronically. The IRS now offers free e-filing software to people making less than $72,000 a year. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Now, for those who have filed, you can check the status of your tax refund at irs.gov.